I was on the uh, the the Facebooks the other day, and I had a article come across my page, and it's about the concept of a character called Wapeach. Oh Wapeach? yeah, yeah, yes. I know about Wapeach. Okay, I just learned about Wapeach. We Did? just had a conversation about <laughs> not doing that. I'm sorry. I okay. don't think you are. That was deliberate. You it, had so much time to not burp into the mic. <laughs> it was. Here's the thing, okay? Wapeach. If Ferd is into leather, Wapeach is his wet dream. Okay? Because just, just look at this concept art. Oh. Oh, he would be into that. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> like, Regular Peach is him having a fantasy of, you know, rescuing the damsel in distress and being her lover. Mm-hmm. And then Wa Peach is his... Pure domination yeah. of Peach. The only problem <laughs> with Wa Peach is that she may or may not be a child. <laughs> they think that she's younger because she's got like a, a smaller crown and she's shorter. Yeah, I don't necessarily know about that. I'm pretty sure she's still supposed to be the same age as Peach. I don't know. She it's... was originally supposed to be in Mario Tennis along with um, Wario and Waluigi. So why Wa Peach? Is it like a mixture between one of the Wa brothers? Wa just means bad. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm learning things. <laughs> It's okay. I'm Waluigi, naughty Luigi. Ooh. <laughs> Listen, I have a picture framed in my room, my bedroom. You sure do. <laughs> of slutty Mario, not Mario, slutty <laughs> Wario and Waluigi. Hell I'm yeah. pretty sure I someone, bought it for you. Yeah, you did. I'm sure someone has drawn slutty Mario. I'm oh, yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you draw thick ass Mario. Yeah, thick ass Mario, not in lingerie Mario. No, but you could still bounce a quarter off those cheeks. <laughs> also, like I've seen sexy Mario cosplays. Of course, there is sexy mm-hmm. Mario fan art. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Either way, I saw that and I was like, "Wow, that is Ferd's wet dream," mm-hmm. and I hate it. Mm-hmm. I hate that I can't escape him. Well, he lives in our hearts forever, and we love him for it. I, I think I'm going to have to go kill myself. Okay. Have fun. <laughs> oh my god. I'm kidding. <laughs> Please don't do that. Okay, bye. Why did I write this? Welcome to Why Did I Write This? The podcast where we read and write bad writing so you don't gotta. I'm Ophelia. I'm Anna. I'm Beth. <laughs> Excuse me. You got pep I'm... that energy up, miss ma'am. Ugh. You got some crazy shit going on today that's for sure i have been told to be prepared to laugh so i'm looking forward to it did you bring an extra pair of pants so you can piss them (laughs) well i took a shower earlier so i think i'm covered i don't think that's how that works no that's not how that works (laughs) also that implies that you're pissing in your shower no post post no pre pre pre-show Pre-show piss in the shower. <laughs> you know what? I don't piss in the shower, nor do I waffle stomp in the shower. Thank and I consider that a win. It's a win in life. <laughs> that's that's a really low bar win, but okay. You, you know, know what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> We're not doing that today. No. <laughs> you can't see it, but Boo is horrified. She's like, oh my god, what the hell? There's two of them. <laughs> Woo! Okay, anyways, now that you've both been possessed. So, am I allowed to open this document yet that I have been sent? Well, well first, I, thought... I think you have something that came in the mail for you, actually. Yeah, I was told you had a letter that showed I up. I never get letters. Yeah. You just got a um, letter. I don't know. I came home from work, and this was just hanging out in our mailbox. It's from the bank. Is your <laughs> house being foreclosed on? <laughs> It looks like there's yeah. sweat stains on it. Uh, that's <laughs> sweat interesting. Sweat stains? Yeah. We didn't have a proper return address. I don't think the actual bank sent this to us. So it's like someone dipped this in piss coffee. Piss, piss coffee? coffee? Why did you smell it <laughs> if it's piss coffee? I just wanted to see. Well, 
Oh. Oh, it's crusty oh. just for you. She's so crusty. Well, um, I opened it and I see a friend has come to visit. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, well, that might not be the only thing he's come on, but that's fine. <laughs> Please. <laughs> You're the one holding it, not me. Well, it appears to be a story. Oh. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so, don't, don't read ahead. I'm not reading ahead. Okay. Okay. So, um, is this what we're starting off with reading first? Obviously. Sure is. Okay. <clears throat> Let me <laughs> peel it open. This crusty little document. That hey, where's came your in the UV mail? light so you can quick run that over? I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wash my hands later. <laughs> okay. Well, there's no title or anything. It just starts off with chapter one. God. <laughs> Ferd sat alone in his room, working at his desk that had been covered in a thick crust of Cheeto dust, spilled Mountain Dew, and other substances. Ferd worked with fervor, <laughs> sticking out his Ferd fur. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> sticking out his tongue in concentration as he made his last stitch. Uh, there. <laughs> Ferd exclaimed with relief in his voice. I finally managed to fix you, my princess. Ferd held up the plush doll of Princess Peach as he observed his handiwork, but his smile faltered. Good. Good as new. <laughs> the Princess Peach doll Ferd had stitched back together with supplies stolen from his mother's sewing kit was far from good as new. What was once a near-perfect totem of his darling princess's count... count countenance. <laughs> 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 What? <laughs> it was a lumpy Frankenstein-like monstrosity. One of the eyes had moved to the center of Peach's face and the other two her right hip. How the fuck did you fuck up that bad? <laughs> He's trying. Not good enough. Oh shit. It's furred. What do you expect from him? The dress looked like a baby's onesie and somehow a third arm was sticking out the back of Peach's head. Ferd couldn't hold back his tears anymore and flung himself dramatically onto his bed, causing it to creak and crack angrily before the frame broke, but Ferd didn't care. I dislike that because I can just imagine him doing a full-blown toddler tantrum. <laughs> Me too. Like, the legs kicking <laughs> mm -hmm. and everything. Just, like, pounding his yes. fists. Yes. Ugh, I hate it. Ferd wailed in despair as he clutched the mangled doll to his jiggling chest. <laughs> he wailed in despair? Yeah, wailed in despair. I know, I just like the way you said wailed. Wailed. In his crusted t-shirt. Why is it crusty? Why would you wash that? It's Ferd. You think he washes his clothes? He wipes his Cheeto fingers. I would say, would you like to take a guess? Shirt. It's either Cheeto cum or Mountain Dew. Oh my god. Take your pick. <laughs> Cheeto cum. <laughs> Ew. this was all that stupid jock's fault there were so many televisions in the student center but that jock just had to have the one ford was using to play the greatest kart racing game video game of all time mario kart double dash ford stood his ground as the jock ordered ford to stop playing so he could watch some stupid mindless sports game when Ferd refused, the jock chopped up Ferd's Princess Peach Plus with a pair of scissors, sharp scissors, in front of everybody in the student center. Now not only was Ferd the laughing stock of his college, but his precious treasure had been des desecrated. I'll, I'll kill him, Ferd whined before snorting a massive wad of snot down his throat to clear his nose. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to try and make a noise for us on that one? I hate that. <laughs> I didn't think you were actually going to. I don't know why. I have to add omnomatopoeia. Oh. Omnomatopoeia? <laughs> omnomatopoeia? Omnomatopoeia? <laughs> omnomatopoeia? <laughs> I'll make him pay. I'll make him sorry that he ever dared lay a hand on you, princess. Ferd held the doll up in front of him as he made this declaration. I promise no one will ever harm you again. I swear on my very soul. One of the doll's eyes dropped onto Ferd's chest, prompting another heartbroken wail. There was a sudden shift in the air that caught Ferd's attention. A whooshing sound began to grow. What? 
whooshing noise. Oh, a whooshing noise began to grow as sparks of electricity formed in the air and a mysterious wind began to blow through Ferg's room, stringing up years of dust, dirt, and empty food wrappers. Suddenly, there was a bright flash before the strange phenomenon stopped. Obscured by the debris hanging in the air, someone began to cough and choke. Ferd cautiously approached the source of the coughing. H Hello? Who who's there? Ferd whimpered. The coughing continued as the dust began to settle and reveal who was on the other side of the mess. Standing slightly hunched over as she coughed was a woman who looked somewhere between the ages of 13 and 29. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> she was wearing an eye patch over her left eye, likely to cover the damage from a massive scar that ran down from her forehead to her chin. The woman's tied back dark brown hair was slightly singed as she was and she was dressed in some kind of heavy duty coveralls adorned with holsters containing devices and what Ferd could only imagine were weapons of some kind. Do you need <clears throat> someone to take over some of the reading? Yes. All right. Who are you? Ferd demanded as the woman stopped coughing and regained her composure. She turned a stern eye on Ferd, which caused him to shrink back. Where am I? What year is it? The woman growled. Ferd tried to make himself as small as possible before answering. It, it's 2013. You're in Peachwood Park, Iowa, Ferd whimpered back. 2013. Iowa? Shit. The woman spat on Ferd's floor. This damn thing must be broken. The woman clutched a small black device in her hand, a hand that Ferd noticed was attached to a highly advanced robotic arm. Ferd was fascinated and entranced by this new mystery, but his fascination was broken. <laughs> Don't laugh at my throat <laughs> noises. <laughs> Ferd was fascinated and entranced by this new mystery, but his fascination was broken as the woman's attention snapped back to him. You! I need a 30-pin USB sync cable and a computer. Now! Ferd cowered again, but rolled over to his desk and began to dig through his box of mixed cables that he refused to throw away. <laughs> For once, Ferd's hoarding helped helping him as he managed to find the exact kind of cable the woman requested, though it was covered in some kind of mysterious grime. Everything. <laughs> everything that he fucking owns. He's it, a grimy man. Yeah. <laughs> He's a grimy man. What a way to describe him. You can use my c c computer, ma'am. <laughs> Ferd groveled as he held the cable out to the woman. The woman snatched the cable and threw Ferd out of the way as she rushed to the computer where she promptly plugged the cable into the least crusty USB Ew. port and plugged the other end of the cable into the device she was holding. The computer beeped as it synced with the device and the woman began to type something on the keyboard. Ferd struggled to his feet, wheezing as he did, and cautiously stepped toward the woman. Um, who are you? The woman didn't look away from the computer as she spoke. No! And I'm looking for a dangerous time traveling criminal. <laughs> Ferd could hardly believe what he was hearing, but considering the strange way this woman appeared in his room, he couldn't help but believe her. Who is this criminal? What do they do? Ferd asked, <laughs> genuinely curious. Are you crying? <laughs> we haven't we haven't even gotten that far and you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Stop reading ahead! I'm sorry! <laughs> he goes by Jude, Anna answered. He and I have been fighting through the time stream longer than I can remember. He's an assassin, and he's going after the person he hates the most. Someone I made sure to save the, <laughs> save the first time his life was threatened. Who does he hate that much? John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> Anna spoke as she continued to type. Ferd perked up as he recognized the name. What do you mean? Oh, John, not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
You're so famous. <laughs> Wait, John Lennon? The John Lennon from the Beatles? Fred scratched his head in confusion. Didn't he die in like the 80s? December 8th, 1980 to be exact. <laughs> you Anna wouldn't explained. know that. You fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah. Anna explained as she ejected her device from Ferd's computer and began to interact with it just out of Ferd's line of sight. I see he's still dead in this timeline. Seems like a good place to start. That means Jude will have to appear to prevent me from saving John again. And you're going to help me. No. Anna pointed a robotic finger at Ferd who jumped back in surprise. <gasps> Beth, do you want to take over for the last of it? Oh, sure. M- me? Why me? Ferd asked. Because I can't do this alone. And I already downloaded your computer's browser history to my time machine's <laughs> data banks, Anna explained. The threat clear in her voice. Ferd went pale and his head felt light as he realized his mistake in helping this woman, but couldn't think of a way to avoid having to help her. If you don't help me, I'll make copies of your browser history, post it online, and hand out printed copies of everyone with your picture oh no of it to everyone with your picture it to everyone within a 50 mile radius <laughs> everyone gets it everyone <laughs> everyone within a 50 mile radius is everyone. going to know his browser history Fuck, we're just everybody not even the 50 miles just everyone anyways oh no what what's up ma'am no continue oh okay Fred threw up in his mouth, but managed to swallow it. Pleasantly surprised by the flavor of regurgitated <laughs> Cheetos. Gross. I almost said Cheerios. <laughs> you think this man's That's heart healthy? healthy. <laughs> <laughs> he cares about his cholesterol. <laughs> He's got to have clearly, something for, clearly. For each. <laughs> okay, I'll help you. Just please don't release my browser history. Ferd fell to his knees, shaking the house. Pick is this man <laughs> shaking the whole house and groveled. He really likes groveling as well. Yeah. Get up. We're leaving immediately. Hopefully the firmware update should fix my device's malfunction. Anna typed into her device as Ferd stood up. Okay, let's try for 1967. Why then? Ferd asked. I'll be able to get some more help then, Anna explained. But how are we going to get there? Using this? <laughs> Anna held up her device. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my god. <laughs> Revealing it to be an iPod classic that had been heavily modified. Now stay close or the time gate will shave off part of your body when it closes. Trust me. Anna held up her robotic right arm. I know. For... <laughs> Ferd crowded in close to Anna and she pressed the center button on her iPod and a bright flash filled the room. Ferd felt himself getting sucked away from his room and going towards somewhere he had never dreamed of going. Ni- yeah, 1966. So we're going to yeah, 67. Yeah, we're going to 67, but apparently we're going to 66. Ferd doesn't know his years. It's fine. <laughs> Before the time gate closed, Ferd looked back and saw the plush Princess Peach sitting on his bed, seemingly staring at him with her one remaining eye. Ferd shed a single tear, but held out hope that if time travel was real, he may have the chance to save Peach from her fate. There was a sudden whoosh and a final flash as Anna and Ferd disappeared, leaving only a rain of debris in Ferd's room. The Princess Peach flush, 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 fell into its side and off the bed, into the garbage below. Did you like the letter from Ferd? What is this fan fiction that he sent me? First off... I hate that I want more. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so well written and it's just I did not expect such a beautiful crossover of not only Ferd. This is clearly Ferd's self-insert fanfic oh, yeah. of your Beatles fanfics. <sighs> well, thank Honestly, you. he made you way cooler. <laughs> he did make you way cool. <laughs> hey, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not gonna. The robotic arm did make me cooler, and I'm glad I answered the question of why I had a robotic arm. Oh my god, you just got roasted, bro. <laughs> I also think 
my favorite detail in the story is that you look anywhere between 13, 13 and, and 29. 29. It's anyone's guess at this it's point. It's fine. And how old are you? <laughs> well, I'm 29 now. I'm turning 30 this month. <laughs> I'm so old. Yeah, you are. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, at first I thought Carmen San Diego was showing up to save the day. <laughs> I can see where you'd be mistaken. Yeah. Where yeah. in the world is she? She's with Ferd. <laughs> well, apparently not, because you're no. with Ferd. And you guys are really close together in your time machines. Like, so... I want to know what happens. But I also don't want a fucked up, weird obsession romance between him, like, unrequited, right? Because I'm not into that. But I could see him being like, I'm going to write it that way and I'm going to win her over. Because his name is Ferd. Ferd's going to listen to this episode and take notes. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ferd, thank you for your fan mail. Next time, I don't want your comeback. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a nice touch. <laughs> was it? Was it really a nice touch? You keep feeling it after saying you don't want the cum paper. Well, it's back and it's in the envelope again. The so. cum envelope? Well, the envelope looks clean. That's not what she said earlier, but that's cum okay. Envelope. <laughs> okay, well, I think it's time to give some writing prompts and that was a... Hopefully none of them involve furred cum or cheeto. <laughs> well... I suppose you want me to reach them, because yeah, I'm it would the only be... one that has access. Yeah. I think we're about due for some new ones. Oh, is it my turn? Well, you're right there, unless Ophelia's got a last of arms. It's fine. That's a goblin. I'm gonna arm. be, like, the... <laughs> if it's fucking fur, <laughs> Cheetos, or cum, I'm gone. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's My first day as a ceiling fan. <laughs> I love that these are all prompts that Anna has written. (laughs) My favorite is when she pulls them and goes, this is such a stupid prompt. Girl, you fucking wrote it. I know, but this is fun. (laughs) Okay. Anyways, I was going to say that I'm going to get elastic arms that are like the mom in Bands on the Run. (laughs) (laughs) Do you remember well, when she's, she's walking the toddler into the store? It's not and even her... a toddler, it's a baby. <laughs> it's like by her ankle. No, because I think I fell asleep during that part, honestly. Oh, God, how could you fall asleep during oh, Bands on I've, the Run? I fell asleep during most of Bands on the Run. <laughs> that was like the best movie. It was not. Oh, no one's going to have one like this. It's a fucking rubber band. <laughs> They're all rubber bands. Yes, but Stretch is the best rubber band. He's we... just a rubber band. You can we... get it in a thousand pack. He... <laughs> He's not a silly band. He is a rubber band. His name is Stretch, and he's great, and he just wants to be loved and accepted. And then there's fucking Edison, and I will take a pair of scissors to him. I will be, I will be that jock that snipped up Princess Peach, uh-huh. Ferd's Princess Peach, except it's Edison, and I will have no remorse. We're gonna have to do a deep dive on this movie. <laughs> Yeah. But, but anyway, let's get to work on this prompt. Remember, it's my first day as a ceiling fan. First day as a ceiling fan. But I've I never am. been a ceiling fan. How am I supposed to write about my first it's day? Called, use your fucking imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Bloom like a fucking flower bath. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you know what? I hadn't thought about that. My bad. <laughs> we'll be back after these messages. You are entering a world beyond sense and coherence. Picture, if you will, a woman sitting on a couch. In her right hand is a pencil topped with a lame eraser. In her left hand is a piece of paper with the letters G-L-A-R-G written upon it. It is an invite to the gallery of Anna Out of, Out of context. context. Stop! You're making my ears itch. Sometimes when you massage your feet, you hit the crunchies, you know? Not the bones, not the ligaments, but the crunchies, you know? Perry Platypus Kids. I'm just waiting to see if I have a pool in my thumb. 
I don't want to have a community pool in my thumb. Welcome well, back. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. back. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> uh huh. All right. So we did our writings and we flipped them, switched them. Flipped them, switched them. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. I've got Anna's. I have Beth's. I got Ophelia's. I was the one who was the last to finish this time around. Yeah, you took a hot minute. I know. I'm sorry. But is it a hot dumpy? It's something. I mean, I don't know. She was cackling up a she storm sure at some was. point, so I'm a little nervous. I saw one piece of it, like one specific thing, and I'm like, hmm, very specific. Okay. I've, I've just been reading the first line of writing prompt, first day as a ceiling fan, over and over, and then the line under that, so. Uh-huh. Well, who <laughs> wants to go first? I can read Ophelia's, can, I guess. Can go you for see it? it? Sure, let me turn it into the light first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't want to read a feel this first anymore. Too bad. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Uh-huh. <laughs> My first day as a ceiling fan. You spin me right. <laughs> oh, sorry, like a ceiling fan, baby, right round, right round. Observing the humble ceiling fan on their first day on the job. Wow, that is a fucked up J. <laughs> you may notice that they spin either too fast or too slow. This is because much like humans, ceiling fans also get nervous on their first day of a new job. But with some patience and encouragement, your ceiling fan too can make a potato fly around the room. <laughs> Stay patient and kind for your newest ceiling fans. I thought you were going to make a B-movie joke about they can't carry the weight. Oh, no. It's a good well, ad. Good. Good job. Thank you. I'll read best next. Okay. I watched from above. The boys in my chemical... <laughs> the boys in my chemical romance were headed up to the stage. What a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Not many people got to see the show like this. As the boys were getting ready backstage, we all got to see the action like their wardrobe manager running over an intern's toes. The bucket of drumsticks was melting on the drum set. What? Oh, like the ice cream. <laughs> yes. All the cool stuff normal people didn't get to see, but I did. I was a part of the special group more than a fan club. Oh, wait. Wow, I skipped a line. But I did. I was part of a special group. More than a fan club, I smelled as they tightened my legs. Smelled? Smiled. <laughs> Smiled. <laughs> Smiled as they tightened my legs to the rafters and double checked my harness. A crackle came over the radio. Rafter 12? Is that yes. The are you ready? Sure are, said the staff member. The ceiling fans are ready to go. I just got that. <laughs> That's so fucking dumb. <laughs> it's their first day as a ceiling fan. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you. Did you like how in the beginning I was like, wait, I have a different angle. <laughs> Threw my other one away. Yep. Yeah, we were just like hanging out, writing for a bit, and then Beth's just like <laughs> angrily crumpled up a piece of paper and threw it across the room. All right. Uh, okay, Anna was writing for a long yeah, fucking time. Yeah, I've got Her two five and a half. minutes was different than ours. Yeah, it was more like <laughs> ten. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Be like that. I had a lot to say. All right. Writing prompt. First day as a ceiling fan. Unboxed and wired up. Today is the day. It's 90 degrees outside and the old man is sweaty today. I'm so nervous. What if he doesn't think I'm cool enough to keep him cool? He shuffles in, spends a gracious amount of time moistening his cracked, wrinkled lips, each crevice now dusted and filled with saliva. <laughs> okay, let's turn her on. <laughs> he claps his hands and pulls my string. Wait, that string pull felt kind of nice. <laughs> a strange sensation fills me as I get to spinning. <laughs> faster and faster, the world below me blurs. Oh, that's good. Let's kick her up a notch. Let's kick her up a notch. The old man gingerly pulls my string twice more. 
I get faster and the sensation overwhelms me. Faster, faster, the old man shouts, <laughs> whirring. I am reaching unobtainable speeds, trying to please my installer. <laughs> More! Faster! He pulls my chain and I feel the world spin beyond any measurable speed. Suddenly, the world short circuits and I fly from my roost, dismembering my master. My pleasure is gone, but my first day on the job was my last. My installer smiles and caresses me. My install skills need work, but for twenty nine ninety nine, you were the best fan I've ever had. He held me close as we closed our eyes together. You are the only person that I know that could write softcore porn about a fucking ceiling fan. <laughs> I want you to go ahead and I want you to put that out there on the internet. And there is some weirdo somewhere that will give you a dollar for it. Hey, a dollar's a dollar. <laughs> you a gangster now? Fuck. Or they can just listen to this episode and, you know, listen to my sweet voice narrate this softcore ceiling fan porn. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good title. Softcore ceiling fan porn. Sounds a good time. <laughs> softcore ceiling fan porn. That is our, that's our title. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, what a- what an adventure we had today. Yeah, I mean, we got some Ferd fiction in. That shit was Submitted intense. by Ferd our, himself. Yeah. With me as an unwilling participant, but you know what? He did make me sound cool. He gave you a robot arm. That's pretty cool. Can't complain. Mm-hmm. As Ophelia said, he made you sound cooler than you really are. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't forgotten. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us on this wild roller coaster, friends. It's been a pleasure. Sure. Um. Oh, before we go, I just wanted to give the audience a much needed update. <laughs> I have obtained subs. <laughs> not not subscribers. <laughs> The sandwich. I thought you were going to tell everybody you pooped at your man's house finally. No. Well, well that is did. a good update. But <laughs> I have successfully treated myself to some subs. Yes. And you will do it again in a heartbeat. I know. I want some more. <laughs> She's going to eat the last of our sub stuff. Maybe. I don't know. We'll Probably. see. No. No. Because I'm leaving after this, and I, I might get something else. But she anyway. Might. She will. She knows she is. She's being modest. Yeah. <laughs> well, my name is Anna. I'm Ophelia. <coughs> <laughs> I'm Beth. Is the frog better or worse than what just happened there? <laughs> I don't know. But that's a ceiling fan. Bye! Bye! Bye. <laughs> Why did I write this? Thank you for listening to Why Did I Write This, hosted by Anna, Beth, and Ophelia, brought to you by the record button. Want to show off your love for the show? You can buy our merch at trbmerchstore.threadless.com. Want to hear more from the record button? You can find us at recordbuttongroup.com, where you'll find links to our socials on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you for listening! The songs Heartbreaking, Invariance, Crypto, Ghostpocalypse, To the Call, Hammock Fight, Dead Drop, and Break Time are by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 4.0. The song Neon for Breakfast is by Mr. Hagen, presented courtesy of Mr. Hagen. You can find more of his work at ZacharyDaniels.Bandcamp.com.